Let's review our process for finding an indefinite integral by using an example. So we're going to take the indefinite integral, x squared plus 2x dx. What that means is I want to find a function, okay, we'll call it capital F, such that if I take its derivative, we get back x squared plus 2x. So the idea here is we're given a derivative. I want to find all functions that have that derivative. Now the procedure that we use, okay, if I have x to a power, we're just going to take the power, we're going to add 1, flip it over. So for the x squared, we're going to add 1, which gives me an x cubed, and then I divide by 3. For the 2x, okay, we take a look at x, which is x to the 1. We add 1, so it's going to give me x squared, flip it over, we get x squared over 2. Then the 2's cancel, leaving me with x squared. Then we're going to have plus a constant of integration. So the idea here is, this thing here we found is going to be an antiderivative of x squared plus 2x. So that means this function here, if we take its derivative, gives us x squared plus 2x. Thing is, if we add constants to that, we'll also get more antiderivatives. So we just tack on constant of integration to account for all of those. Now, we're not done yet. We check our work. So if we take the derivative of this, we expect to get x squared plus 2x back. So, derivative of x cubed is going to be 3x squared, cancels with the 1 third, leaving me with an x squared. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Then the derivative of the constant is going to be 0. So you'll note our check works out. When we take the derivative here, we get back our integrand. Okay. Now, one reason to work out this example. There are things I'm doing here that are fast and loose, meaning we haven't showed them yet. So, one thing I've done without explaining, well, I've gone ahead and considered the indefinite integral of each term separately. So the idea is we're going to be allowed to take a sum, take its indefinite integral, and then we can just break the sum apart. So you work out your answer separately, then you put them back together at the end. Then if we have numbers on the inside, so scalars, we're allowed to ignore them, meaning, okay, you work out your indefinite integral without the scalar and then put it back in when you're done. So these rules you use all the time with derivatives, okay, they're also going to hold for when we do antiderivatives and indefinite integrals. Now, let's check that these always work out. Okay, so the idea is going to be we're allowed to break apart sums in indefinite integrals and we're allowed to pull out constants in indefinite integrals. The proofs of these are just going to be symbol pushing. So, idea, we're going to have a capital F, capital G. If I take the derivative of capital F, I get little f. Take the derivative of capital G, I get little g. Okay, remember, if I say capital F prime is equal to F, that's the same as saying, okay, the indefinite integral of F with respect to X is equal to capital F plus a constant. So, that's how we start. If I take these two indefinite integrals, add them together, Okay, the first term is just capital F, second term is just capital G, and then we're going to put the constants of integration together as one constant. Now, another thing we can do, I could take capital F plus capital G, take the derivative. Now note, one of our derivative rules says, okay, if I want to take a derivative of a sum, take the derivative of each term, add them together when you're done. So that's going to be equal to F prime plus G prime, and note F prime is equal to F, G prime is equal to G, so if I consider this thing as one term, that says the indefinite integral of f plus g is equal to capital F plus capital G, and then plus constant of integration. So now we have capital F plus capital G is equal to okay, indefinite integral of both terms on the inside, but that's also equal to what we get when we break it apart. So that's our first rule. For the second rule, Okay, we'll assume we have capital F prime is equal to little f. So what's going to happen here? If I take our constant times capital F, take the derivative. Well, our rule for derivative says, okay, you can put the constant on the outside, take your derivative, and then bring the constant back in for the final answer. So we're going to have our constant times capital F prime. Capital F prime is just going to be equal to little f, and now we just rewrite this. So this is going to say, if I take 
okay? Indefinite integral of our constant times f, okay, that there, that's gonna be equal to c times capital F, what's on the inside of the derivative. So that means this is equal to, okay, constant times capital F plus the constant of integration, but now note capital F is just gonna be your indefinite integral of F with respect to x. So all we've done here is move the constant from the inside to the outside. So our two rules are gonna hold no matter what your f and g, assuming everything makes sense. Now, we take our two rules, take our rule from before, so that was just indefinite integral of x to the n with respect to x. Okay, that gives you your add one flip it over rule, as long as your n is not equal to minus one. We start building a list of functions we could take the indefinite integral of. Now, one rule that's worth setting aside Okay, if I take the indefinite integral of r, a constant, with respect to x, then we're just gonna take r times x plus our constant of integration. So here you can think of this as being r times x to the zero power. You add one, flip it over, that's just gonna give you x over one, or just x. So we have r times x. Okay, and of course you check this. If we take its derivative, out comes r, and that's our integrand. Now, putting all of this together. Now we can take the indefinite integral of any polynomial. So those are gonna be integer powers of x where those integers are either zero or positive. So that would be something like if I took indefinite integral of x to the 10 minus six x cubed plus four dx, what do you do? Just go through term by term, add one and flip it over. When you get to the four, you just tack on an x. So we would have x to the 11, okay, then we flip over to get 1 11th, Okay, we have a minus six, which we weighed on. So for the x cubed, we add a one, gives me x to the fourth, divide by four, so I have a minus six over four. And then for the four, okay, that has no x power on it, so we just multiply by x, and then add on our constant of integration. Of course, you're gonna check your work. If you take the derivative of this, you should get back your integrand. Now, we also can do things where we have, say, negative powers of x, as long as it's not power equal to minus one. So for instance, let's try indefinite integral of one minus x squared squared divided by x to the fourth with respect to x. Now, that one doesn't look like anything we recognize. Point here is we just need to expand, simplify, and then it goes right through. So for instance, if we expand the numerator, I get one minus two x squared plus x to the fourth. We're dividing by x to the fourth so I can divide that into each term. That'll give me x to the minus four, minus two x to the minus two plus one. And now each of these, we just use the add one, flip it over rule. So we're gonna get, here I'll get x to the minus three. Okay, so I add one. When I flip it over, that's gonna be one over minus three. Here, I have x to the minus two. So I add one, I get a minus one. We flip that over, we'll have a minus two over a minus one. And then for the one, we're just gonna turn that into an x by our special rule. Then we put on the constant of integration. Now, if you know it, if you check your work, okay, you take the derivative, what comes out is just gonna be this step here. So you really wanna check this against your original integrand, okay, because if you made any mistakes along the way, okay, they're not gonna get caught by checking here. So, Another way to check your answer when your expressions are complicated, you just check at specific points. So for instance, how about if I check this against this by checking at the points x equals one, x equals two. So for the integrand, if I put in one and two, I'll get zero and nine over 16. If I put one and two into our final expression here, you'll note you're gonna get zero and nine over 16. Okay, so you work that out. Now the idea here is, that's not as good a check, but if you're in an exam situation and you have not much time left, it's better than nothing.